For this lesson in Photoshop, we're going to talk about the blending options and the filters. If you'd like to see the previous two episodes, you can click on the screen or there'll be a link in the description to the playlist. For this example, I'm going to show you how to apply to text. To get to the blending options, you can either double left click in the empty area, make sure it's on this side and not inside the text, otherwise it will rename it. So if you double left click in this empty area, or you can right click here and then go to blending options. The first option you will have is the blending options itself. So this applies it for the general blending. These are the general settings for the options which you have available. Then you have some of these other effects which help to structure and give the text certain effects. So if we take a look at the bevel and emboss, which is the first one, it is used to create three dimensional text and make your text look more dramatic and make it look a lot more interesting. First of all, what we need to do is change the technique to chisel hard. Now the first one you have is style. Let's say we go to outer bevel. This will apply the effect outside of the text. If you have it on the inner bevel, it will be inside the text. Then you have emboss, which is center. So it's outside and inside pillow emboss. So instead of it looking like this, it is inverted. So it's the opposite direction. You have the darker shading on the top and the lighter shading on the bottom. The very last one is a stroke emboss. Now this one will only apply if you have a stroke effect. So if we get ourselves a stroke, you will notice as soon as we start to increase the size, you can see it's applied to this stroke effect. You have depth, which will make it more stronger. So the lower the number, the softer it'll be. The higher the number, the more aggressive the shading will be. You have the direction so you can change it from up to down and that will swap it over. You have size, you can change the size here. You have soften which will make it a lot more softer. So you can give it more of a weaker effect like this one. Next up you will have angle. This is where the shading will apply. So where exactly do you want the light to be on this text? So as you can see right now, it's on 90 degrees and it is above the center dot. The light is about here and it is showing light on the text. And if you change it to somewhere else, that's where it will apply it to. But normally it looks good on 90 and you want to have it just in the center. Now, the great thing about this is if you make any mistake and you want to set it back to default, you have this option down here to reset it to default or you can even make it a default view. The rest of these options are pretty much about shading and how the actual text will look like, the end result. You have things like global light. This one will apply it to other layers you have and it will keep it the same. You have attitude, which determines how it would look like. So for example, if you put it on 20, it will be more visible if we put it on higher, it will be less visible because it's getting closer to the center. So normally this will be on 90 and this one will be on, let's say 35. And that is a good number. Then you have something called glass contour and this pretty much gives it this glass effect. So if you're looking to give your text a certain effect, so for example, this one, this looks quite interesting. You can mess about with these. You can edit your own by clicking on the image itself and you can add points to change the mapping of it. You have input and output. You can manually change each and every point by clicking on them and editing the output and input. If you wanted to, you can also save this or you can load a certain one you have. You can even create a new one and you have the options right here. So you can get yourself some templates which are already being made for you. Moving on to highlight mode, this is about how exactly the highlights of the effect will apply. Normally this will be on white and you should leave it on this color unless you wanted to give it like a certain tint. For example, if we go with a red color and press okay, 
you should be able to see if you change it to a different effect. These are all the effects you have here. And as you can see, we just gave our text this red tint to it. I'm going to set it back to default. And then of course, the very last one, you have the shadow mode and the shadow is pretty much what the shadow will look like. So you could change the shadows from here. With bevel and emboss, you have two other effects which tie together, and that is contour and texture. Contour is similar to before, where it changes the overall look. So if we were looking for a certain effect, we would go and change it in here. Texture is all about giving your text a specific texture. So if you have a certain pattern that you have, you can apply it to your text. As you can see, I have a few different ones. Some of the ones that you have are default. So this one, and you could change the scale of it in here. You could change the depth and you can also link it with the layer or you can invert it, whatever you'd like to do with it. The outer line is there to help the text be more visible. So for example, if you were making a thumbnail and your text was hard to see, you would use this stroke effect to make it stand out more. You can change the size here. You have a scale, have it on zero, or you can have it on 250, which is the maximum. Then you have the position of it. So do you want it to be in the inside, in the center, or just on the outside? Most of the time it'll look better if it was on the outside, but there is situations where you'd want to use it on the inside. If you put it on a smaller number, as you can see, this looks quite nice. And then we get to the blend mode. This is how the effect will look like. And the effect will be in here. Now with a stroke effect, it wouldn't really make much of a difference. So if we click on here and use our scroll wheel to go down to skip through the effects, you won't see much of a difference. Some of them you could see this one's quite interesting the color dodge, you could just slightly see a fainted line, but most of them are just the same. Another cool thing about this one is you can change the fill type to a different mode. So you have color gradient and pattern with a gradient effect. You can mix two different colors together. You could change the style of it. So if you wanted it to be radius, you could change it to this one. You could change it to diamond and much more. You could change the color by going in here and clicking on the first one. The bottom one will normally be the color and the top one will be the opacity of it. So if you want it to be, let's say you wanted it to go from black to a 0% opacity, you can do that. But let's put this back to normal and let's change it from a white color to a slightly lighter black. And as you can see, that looks quite good. You have the angle of it. So 90 degrees, you can change it to, let's say 180 and that will make it go from left to right rather than from bottom to top. But we're going to put this on 90 back to normal. You have the scale of it right here. You can make it larger or you can make it smaller. And the very last one, you have a pattern. Now a pattern is pretty much a pattern that is applied on the stroke. To edit it, you go in here and you select a certain pattern which you have created. So just like last time you have the scale here, so you could change the scale and you have some other options like link with layer, snap to origin, overprint, but most of these you won't use. The ones that you will use are size, position, blend mode and fill type. You have this option right here and this option you will notice some of them don't have it. The ones that do are the ones that allow you to have multiple effects of the same kind. If you wanted to have two types of strokes to your image, you can click on this and get yourself another one. And let's say we wanted this one to be a black color and we change the size to something much smaller. Now we have two of them applied onto our text. You can easily delete this by clicking the bin icon. And you can even move them down or move them up wherever you want them to be. So if we wanted this one to be underneath the first stroke effect, we would click on this one and it will move it underneath it. If we wanted it to go above, we will click above. You also have this other shortcut icon down here, which is called effects. And this is pretty much to get you a certain effect that you wanted. So if we wanted to get ourselves a stroke, but we didn't want to click on the icon there, 
we can delete this one and get it from here. What this does is it will make it look like it's being cut out. This can be great for other effects. So you can use this shadow to make your text more realistic. The options for this one are blend mode. You have the color right here. You have opacity. You have the angle, the distance, the choke. This one is how aggressive it will look like. The way I like to see this one is pretty much if it's on zero, it will be normal. But if you want it to be more sharper and you wanted it to be more visible, you would increase this one. You have the size of it, so you can make it smaller or bigger. Then you have the quality and the quality is the contour. This one, you can change how much of it is applied. Right now it's on a normal ramp where it goes from this side to the top, but the other ones will make it look more different. So as you can see, this one is the opposite effect. It is lighter on the outside and dark on the inside. And just like last time, you can pretty much play about with the ramp of it by going in here and change it to whatever you'd like. You can edit each point or you can press delete on each one and create your own. To give it this curved effect, you pretty much move it like so. Next up, we have inner glow. So this is similar to inner shadow, but a inner glow will be the opposite effect and it will be a glow rather than a shadow. This will apply inside of the text. Right now, you won't be able to see it because it's on screen. So if you want to change the blend mode to normal, that will make it visible and you could change the opacity. Normally, this looks a lot better with darker colors. So if we get ourselves a, let's say this color and put it to normal, you can see it a lot better now. If we get ourselves a bright color, this is what the inner glow looks like. So here's an example for you. If you have a red color, you can then go ahead and get a inner glow, but make it red and just slightly brighter. And this gives it this effect. Similar to the other one, you have blend mode, opacity. Underneath that you have noise and noise just makes it look more distorted. Similar to a TV that's lost signal, it will make it look, it's really hard to see right now. So let's just see if we can get a, there we go, that's a more visible color. You can see it is just more spread apart now, rather than being one solid you have the two options between getting yourself a solid color or you can get yourself a gradient. Moving on to satin. The way I like to look at this one is it gives the text a inner dark effect. Normally black will look a lot better. You can make your text look more like iron or you can even make your text look glossy just by adding this effect. You have the blend mode. You could change the different type of blend. Depending on your image, you will get different results for each one. Now, if your text is plain and white, it won't make much of a difference. So you would need to have other effects applied. You then have opacity underneath that. Right now it's on 90, by default it'll be on 75. You have the angle, which is on 90. The distance, the distance is all about how it would look. If you have it smaller, it will apply less. If you have it more, you can see you have this strange light effect. As you can see, this is the original text. This is what it looks like. And it's basically your text behind this one. You can see it slowly gets more blurry. And that's how the effect works. It's a little bit more complicated and difficult to explain. That's why I can't get my words right now. <laughs> but you will understand this later on as you start to use it. You have contour, you could change the contour in here and mess about with this one. And yeah, you can invert it or make it anti aliased Color overlay, this one is the one that I use all the time for everything. And the reason for this is because let's say I added myself some text over here, but I wanted the color to be different I would just go and change it in here rather than creating a new text layer. This one gives you the blend mode, the opacity and the color. If we change the color to something else, 
it will apply it as if it was a solid color and you could change it to different effects. Gradient overlay, this one is similar to color overlay, but this one allows you to mix two different colors together. So like I talked about last time, you have radius right here. You could change it to linear and that will make it go from first color to second color. And depending on your settings, it will look different. Now you have the blend mode, opacity, gradient, style, angle, and the size. You can even reverse it if you wanted to. You can make it dimmer. Underneath that, you will have pattern overlay and pattern overlay is to give it a pattern. Let's just change this to something normal. As you can see, this pattern is a image of leaves and it's applied it to our text. So we don't have to cut anything out. We can just apply it onto here. You have the blend mode, opacity and scale. In the pattern to change it, you click on this arrow right here and you could change it to whatever you would like. Outer glow, we have another glow effect this one is applied on the outside of the text so to make this more visible you would need a good dark background otherwise it won't look as visible but you could change the mode of it by going in here and this is a lot more visible as you can see it's almost like having a outer shadow effect but instead of it being dark it will be more brighter you can make your text glow rather than making it look like it's got a shadow behind it. And of course, the very last one is a drop shadow. This is another one that I use quite a lot for all my text effects or text edits. The reason for this is because it can make your text stand out a lot more. And if you had a regular image, let's say you took a screenshot and you want to add yourself some text for your thumbnail, it will make it look a lot nicer and you don't have to apply a stroke effect. You could tell the difference between a stroke and a drop shadow. This one looks a lot more professional and clean compared to a stroke. To edit this one, all you gotta do is change the blend mode to normal or apply whichever effect you would like. You will definitely be messing about with the opacity of it. So this is how visible it will be. You have the color here, you have angle, you have distance, spread and size. Distance is how far away it will be from your text. Right now it's sitting right behind it. If we increase this, you can see it's slowly moving away from the text. Normally it's a lot better if you have it on a smaller number or you can have it on zero and that will apply it in the center. And the spread of it is how thick it will be compared to before. And of course the size, you could just make it smaller or larger depending on what you're looking for. Quality, you have contour once again and contour will determine what the shadow will look like. You can make it more bold by increasing this. So if we got ourselves this effect and move this up, we delete this one and just move this more like this so it fills it more. You can see our text is a lot more bold. And of course you have the noise as well. You can make it look more like this. This sort of looks like as if we got ourselves salt or pepper behind our text. And that is pretty much our blending options. Now, if you want to understand these more, I have a series on my channel called Text Effect and there you'll see a lot more different effects you can apply to make your text look more interesting. But once you're happy with everything, you must press OK, otherwise the effects won't apply. So you want to press OK. You will normally get your effect underneath it. So whichever effect you applied, you will see it underneath the text layer. And the shortcut for this as well, you can toggle each one by clicking on the eyeball and that will just toggle it off and on. The effects will disable all of them and a specific one will only disable that one. You can disable the effects by right clicking here and disable layer effects. Okay, so that was quite a lot of explaining. Let's switch over to our image and let's talk about the filter. The filter options that you have are up here. You will use this one quite often to get yourself certain effects or make an image. Let's say you want to sharpen the image you would go up here and go to sharpen and click on sharpen. Other options are displayed here, such as filter gallery, adaptive wide angle, camera raw filter, 
lens correction, liquify, and vanishing point. And yeah, pretty much most of these you will use at the start. You can also browse for more of them online, which is the bottom option. The first one that we're going to talk about and start off with is the filter gallery. The filter gallery is a way of making the computer generate a certain texture to your image. Right now we have it on this one right here, which is dry brush. You could just about see that the image has this painted effect and you could change the options right here. So you have the brush size, the larger it'll be, the more smooth it'll be. But obviously the smaller, the more detail. You could change the detail in here. So you can have it on low or high. You have texture as well. And you just pretty much mess about with these settings. Okay, most of these have already been done for you. So these are the ones that you get with Photoshop. You've probably seen some of these before. Post Reg, that's quite a popular one to make yourself look like a cartoon. You can also open up these other folders and have some more in here. Some of these are quite interesting. You can get like this one. That looks quite good. That actually looks really good. <laughs> I'd even, I've never even used that one, but you can, you get the idea. You have these templates here. Most of the time you will have the effects right here. So if you can't see it here, you can quickly grab it from this tab here you can change the size but normally all the options will be on the right side and you will have some other options down here so this is like a pattern you can create yourself a new effect layer you can delete it edit it and so on another thing that i forgot to mention is you have the zoom option right here if yours is like this where it's 100 percent, you can go on down here, click on the arrow and set it on a lower number or you can fit it to view. So I'm not gonna talk about all of these because these will need some explaining and I would rather have separate videos for each one. But if you are subscribed to the channel, you'll see it appear whenever I put it on. But the one that I'm gonna talk about is the camera raw filter. This is quite interesting as well. If you're someone who is looking to change the image look let's say that you are a photographer and you want to change the lighting the temperature you can give it a tint exposure contrast highlights you have all these options here so we're just going to quickly skip through these and go on to the filters itself the first one is 3d now this one you have to enable your Photoshop to be able to open up the 3D rendering. Now, if we click on this, you can see the feature. You need to enable it first in order to be able to use it. But normally what it will do is it'll bring you a separate tab, which will have a 3D workspace and you can edit your text in there. Moving on to blur, you have all the blur types in here. So you have average, blur, blur more, and so on. The common one you will use is Gaussian and motion. These two are usually the ones that give you the better result. So for example, let's apply this one. You will have the radius option right here, and you could change the preview you can zoom out to see what the image looks like and you can move around. But once you move around, you will then see the image without the effect. Once you stop, it will apply it. So if let's say we'll give it a really big blur, you then go ahead and press OK and it's now applied it. If we press Ctrl, Alt and Z to undo, 